ISIS prisons. We don't need them. Need them. We want freedom, freedom. All your sexist, racist prisons. We don't need them. Need them. Back up. We want freedom, freedom. All your sexist, racist prisons. We don't need them. Need them. We're here because, yeah, as you said, the European Custody and Detention Summit is happening today. Um, we know a number of people who profit at various stages of um, border control and um, it's sort of like immigration detention um, are there, including some major security companies like G4S. Um, obviously at Campaigning Against Arms Trade, we talk a lot about the link between um, arms and security companies providing equipment into conflict zones. Uh, people fleeing conflict zones can then sometimes encounter those same companies when they're trying to cross borders to safety into Europe. Um, and sometimes they can again um, encounter some of the same companies running the immigration detention facilities that they may or may not be detained in when they, when they try and reach safety. Um, so there's sort of profit at all stages of the system. Liberation, not incarceration. Liberation, not incarceration. Liberation, not incarceration. Profit from pain is inhumane. 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 So we're here working with a number of other groups um, like Right to Remain and Reclaim Justice and Global Justice Now um, and we're here really to say, um, as you might have heard them chanting behind me, um, profit from pain is inhumane um, and because we're interested in liberation not incarceration. So we're here to protest um, the profit making from uh, both conflicts um, and sort of um, unjust attention. And you are afraid that uh, the more walls we, we have in the future, the more this exploitation will be, uh, the, the bigger will be, the greater will be. Absolutely. It's a really vicious cycle and the only people that profit from that cycle are the arms and security companies. My right to remain, we are now in front of the Tower of London where there is a meeting about the detention systems in Europe and you are protesting. You are in a group which is protesting against the rules, against the privatization, against the business concerning not only the detention of people who committed crimes or were suspected to commit crimes, but also about the detention of uh, asylum seekers and uh, uh, refugees who have uh, failed to get their status until now. Okay, let's talk about this business because it is in the UK, it is in Europe, but especially it is in America. There is a background of this experience, a very rich background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're here today, we're a collection of groups that are concerned with uh, migration justice, uh, the criminal justice system and structural racism within the criminal justice system. Um, it's no coincidence that the European summit is being held at the Tower of London right now because this industry is going through unparalleled growth uh, within Europe right now. The border control industry alone is estimated to be worth over 15 billion pounds and it's also no coincidence that we're seeing these profit margins rapidly in increase at the same time that we're seeing the number of deaths increase on borders in Eastern Europe and in Greece, uh, now in Turkey through the new uh, deal that the EU has struck um, and within detentions here, uh, detention centres here in the UK we've seen a long string of uh, suicide attempts, uh, deaths within custody and that's not to include the, the 4,000 migrants and refugees that have drowned in the Mediterranean Sea this year. And uh, maybe in the future, in the next future, there could be also detention centres in Libya, which is not a stable country at all, where there is still finally a creeping civil war, but someone said, okay, Libya could host refugees to avoid them to reach the European soil. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've seen some incredibly shocking reports come from groups like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch condemning the completely deplorable conditions in uh, detention centers in Libya. Um, the discussion about housing refugees and migrants in Libya is really a follow-on from what we've seen in the EU-Turkey deal. Turkey is a nation where refugees uh, basically enjoy no internationally recognized rights under the law. We're already seeing the Turkish government, which of course uh, everybody likes to forget, has been, there's ample evidence that they are supporting um, many of the terrorist groups in the Middle East that people are running away from while starting to build refugee camps within the conflict zones themselves. They're building camps in Syria, they're building camps in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, the idea that this is fulfilling our international obligation to protect their human rights is absolutely ludicrous. You can't build a refugee camp in a war zone and consider it job done. Now people who listen to us uh, will say, okay, if someone is uh, detained, uh, it cannot be just a cost for the society, it must work like all the other people. But are the rights of these detained workers the same as it is outside or they, are, they have reduced rights? Reduced rights, yes, absolutely. Uh, we see this nowhere more clearly than in the privatization of the prison system in America since the late 1970s. The introduction of corporate interest to the criminal justice system in the States has led to a massive increase in people incarcerated for relatively petty crimes. Uh, we see now that there is a higher number of African American men incarcerated in America than were subject to slavery in the 1800s. And many of these people, apart from being subject to solitary confinement for 20 23 hours out of the day often in what they call the, the maxi prisons in the United States a trend that's starting to be mirrored here in the UK, people are working for wages which are below what you would expect to find in a sweatshop in the developing world. Uh, it is an absolutely gross and stark contrast with the human rights uh, that we are supposed to be upholding um, as social democratic countries. And we see this mirrored again in the detention of uh, asylum seekers and migrants here in the UK in that economically it makes no sense. It costs something more than £30,000 to incarcerate uh, an asylum seeker in the UK for a year for nothing, for committing no crime other than for seeking sanctuary and for really no reason other than the convenience of the Home Office. Who is uh, getting the profit? Uh, only the state or also of course the private uh, companies and uh, how big is, is the profit of uh, the private? Well, for example, um, Serco, which was given responsibility for the private security at the now infamous uh, women's detention centre at Yarlswood, uh, were granted something like £7 million uh, contract with the government. What's interesting is that actually this new corporate-run private incarceration system uh, doesn't profit the state and therefore the public at all. It, it costs us money. Um, many of the privatization, public-private partnerships that we're seeing uh, mirrored in other sectors in the UK, such as healthcare and education, they're costing the taxpayer in terms of assets that are being sold off and in terms of the economics of keeping somebody incarcerated and also the social cost of this is absolutely insurmountable. You know, we speak about, in a very simplistic way, what wages somebody might be earning, what tax somebody might be paying if instead of being in a cage they were out being a productive member of society. But when you include the mental health impact on these individuals, on their families, on their loved ones, the way it tears apart communities, the cost in terms of our well-being and our coherence as a society is absolutely immeasurable.